I'm Erica Karplus, and I head marketing and application development for a California-based medical device company called Proteus Biomedical. And what I do for the company is identify for one of our very interesting technologies, which I'll describe, uh, which application areas we should develop first, second, and third, and in which geographies, Europe, Asia, US, we should develop those technologies. Well, until very recently, medicine has been driven by what I think of as population information. We do studies of various therapies on hundreds or thousands of people, looking for small improvements in their, the benefit that they get from those therapies. And that has some good points and bad points. But it leads to the cases, for example, like the drug Lipitor, which you may be familiar with, the most broadly prescribed drug in the world, where only about 10% of the patients who take Lipitor actually get a benefit. That's not very good value. Uh, you may be familiar with some medical devices, cardiac defibrillators. A uh, $30,000 device costs $30,000 to have it implanted in you, and it only uh, sends its signal, therapeutic signal, of jolting your heart back to action in about 9% of patients. So we had these very expensive therapies that were designed to address population problems, but when you get it down to an individual patient, very few get a, the therapeutic value that was intended. But I'm just as interested in personalized medicine beyond conception. What is it that you do every day? What do you eat? Do you take your medications? Do you exercise? Do you have a happy family life? These are things that you make choices about each day, and that, perhaps far more than your genomics and your genetic proclivities, determines whether you're going to get sick or not and which diseases you may be susceptible. So the challenge is, how do I use that fact, the fact that most of your personalized medicine is up to you and your choices, how do I use that fact to help you have a healthier life? And it gets down to selecting the information that would allow you to make those choices and presenting that information to you in a way that's powerful and, and valuable to you. Some of the most exciting work happening now in personalized medicine is in this other personalized medicine, helping you measure and change your behavior so that you can take greater control of your health. There are a number of uh, researchers and companies who are doing very exciting work in wearable monitors, uh, devices that can measure uh, what you're eating, your activity level, your heart rate, uh, how, how, um, uh, what your sleep pattern is, and there are some very exciting gizmos on the market. So one very interesting technology that gets added to the mix of these wearable monitors and the cell phone uh, is something that we are developing in implanting a very tiny sensor into pills, which when you ingest it, sends a signal. And it says, I'm Erica, and I just took Lipitor 50 milligrams at exactly 6.20 p.m. And that information gets sent in a very safe and private way to a wearable uh, smart plaster or a smart band-aid that picks up that information, records that information, and at the same time measures your physiologic response to those pills you took. So the smart plaster, in addition to picking up information about which pills exactly you took and when, measures your heart rate, your heart rate variability, your activity level, your sleep pattern, your stress, your respiration, so that you and your family members and your doctors can see how you're responding to those medications. And you can, by virtue of the ubiquitous mobile telephone network and the, the way we're designing the system, get reminders back to yourself if you forgot to take your pills. If you have all this information and you are now empowered to be more in control of your health, and if not you, perhaps your family member, if, we can, if, if a system like this can help you keep uh, taking the medications you should, getting the sleep that you should, getting on the right combination of medications, you're le less likely to land in hospital. And landing in hospital is the single, single most expensive part of the healthcare system in the US, in the UK, in Europe, in Asia. To give you an example, um, uh, one of the application areas where we're working in our version of this other personalized medicine is in mental health. There are 
millions and millions of patients living with schizophrenia and bipolar who have great difficulty remembering to take their medic medications. There's a segment of these patients who fully accept that they are seriously ill and are trying to get better. They are called in recovery. But even these people have tremendous challenges in remembering to take their pills. At this conference, uh, I shared a video of one such um, consumer who works with us, and she tells a very poignant tale, which is, and she, this is a woman who uh, had her first psychotic break when she was at graduate school at Harvard. Very, very intelligent and talented woman who now, 10 years in, cannot remember to take her pills and has to have her father call her every night at 7 p.m. to remind her. Now, this is a woman with a Ph.D., and that is her support system to, because the consequences of going off medications are so extreme when you have a serious mental illness that keeping on medication is the single most important thing you can do to prevent what's called a relapse. When she looks at a system of the kind we're developing, she says, ah, now my parents won't have to call me every night. I'll have a, a system that I can tailor to meet my needs that will remind me. And now my parents can just be parents. They don't have to be my doctor or my, my gatekeeper. Um, they can be my parents. And rather than talking about, did I take my pills, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas uh, travel plans. As I mentioned before, uh, there are more people who have access to mobile phones in this world than have access to health care. And that's a very powerful opportunity to use mobile telephones as a way to communicate between doctors and patients in order to send information back and forth between family members to allow them to care for themselves. And I, although there are many fascinating technologies being developed, I think many, many of them will depend on connecting in to the internet and the uh, mobile telephone network because that is the computer that we all carry now and increasingly will carry. That will be the platform for health care of all flavors and in particular for personalized medicine. The cell phone itself is a health tool just the way it is now. We, you can use a, a cell phone to know where you are. Imagine you have an elderly parent who may have dementia or Alzheimer's and you want to know if they go outside their home. Are they wandering away? The cell phone already does that. The cell phone already knows how social you are, which is a key indicator in some uh, illnesses. Are you uh, talking? Are you, be, uh, are you social? Are you talking to your friends? Are you getting out of the house? The cell phone can already do these things. If you then append to that the really cool stuff, including what my company is doing, but others as well, in terms of wearable monitors or ingestible computers, um, the, I think the possibilities are uh, profound in uh, the richness and the scope of information that you, as an individual consumer, will have and can choose to use to manage your own health.